feel like I've talked to you guys like 20 times and we hadn't played a game yet. So I don't know what else I can tell you, but go ahead, fire away. Uh, how was it getting Willie Gay back in practice today and having him back? Yeah, good, good. Um, you know, Willie's um, going to be an important part of what we do and brings a lot of energy to the to the team and the defense. And um, so it was good to get him back out there. He, he was limited today, but it was good to get him back out there um, and, and, wor and working. Obviously, the Panthers redid their coaching staff, but what, what do you make of kind of some of the personnel upgrades they made? I think Deontay Johnson and... Yeah, well, look, I think, <clears throat> you know, from, from an offensive standpoint, um, you know, I thought they kind of beefed up their offensive line. They got probably bigger on the interior than maybe what they've been uh, in prior years. Um, I think they've, they've, they've had two pretty good tackles uh, that, have, that have been there the last couple of years. Um, and, and, but I think they upgraded the, the interior of their offensive line at the guard position. Um, you know, they got a little bit more athleticism, you know, at the tight end position um, with, you know, drafting Sanders, um, you know, Tommy Trimble's the guy that we've, we've uh, you know, played against, Jordan Matthews, you know, really kind of a converted wide receiver. So I think they've upgraded the athleticism at that position. Um, and then they got a couple of young receivers. Um, one that Leggett was a draft pick this year and Mingo a draft pick last year. Both of them high picks. Um, Thielen is, is the ultimate professional in terms of a receiver. And then I think they you know, added an explosive playmaker in Deontay Johnson. So I think they've done some things offensively to really you know, upgrade their team and trying to you know, put some weapons around Bryce Young, uh, help with the, you know, the protection and the ability to run the football, uh, which always helps out a, a quarterback. Um, you know, and then, you know, defensively, obviously with the addition of Jadavian Clowney, that, that's a, that's a, that's a big, uh, big difference. Um, Ashawn Robinson, you know, a, a defensive end tackle uh, that we've played against is a, is, a, is a good football player. So I think they've done some things, you know, along the defensive line, I think, to upgrade themselves. I think in particular, I think they've done some things to upgrade themselves with Clowney as a pass rusher uh, and, uh, Ashawn as a as a run defender. Will that be a good test then for your main <clears throat> offensive line? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Dennis, how, how difficult is it just to you know you know the personnel that you're going to see, but because it is a new head coach with Gabe and you know you haven't really seen how they operate in a game, how, how difficult is that? To do? Yeah, look, I think it's I think it's a challenge. Um, you know, obviously from a defensive standpoint, the 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 defensive staff is there, and so. You kind of know what the structure is going to be, uh, and yet they got a couple of new pieces, so we don't know what adjustments um, you know they're going to make or what what's going to be different than maybe what we saw um, last year. Really, the same thing offensively. You know, we had a chance to go up against Canales a couple of times last year, and so I think from a schematic standpoint, we have a an idea of kind of what they you know what the system is like, and yet. With a different quarterback, I don't know, you know, how they're gonna, you know, want to utilize him. Um, I have my thoughts, uh, but, you know, again, as it is with with everything, um, when you get into the first game of the season, you know, I, I just think it's it's the team that's able to adjust the best uh, that's going to have the most success because, um, you know, everybody's going to have something that you haven't seen yet. Um, and so, I think that'll that'll be the that'll be the challenge for us is is finding out, you know, what they're trying to do, how they're trying to attack us in all three phases, um, and then being able to adjust uh, when we need to. Are there ever times where you're like really surprised by what someone does, or is it usually kind of within their DNA? Um, yeah, I, well, I don't think there's probably as much. <clears throat> Really, in, in terms of like uh, the, the 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 plays, um, how they call the plays, maybe what 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 window dressing they put on the plays, probably the same thing defensively. You know, like you know the structures generally going to be the same, um, and yet I remember we had the, we played the Raiders here back in 
what was it, 15 or 16, I think 16 maybe, and, and we hadn't shown a, an odd front at all. And, and we opened up the game plan an odd front. And I know that messed with them for a little bit. But that, so every now and then you do see some things that, oh, damn, we weren't ready for that, you know. Um, and, and, and yet you have to be able to adjust. You have rules that can take care of whatever you're seeing. Um, but it might be something that you hadn't really worked a lot against, um, you know, over the course of the, the practice week. How do you know when it's time for, like, when you did that, like, waiting that long in the season to kind of do something different? Like, how do you know when it's time to, to kind of switch stuff up? Is it just matchup based or? Um, yeah, well, look, sometimes in, early in the year, you've been working on certain things throughout all of OTAs and training camp and don't show it in the preseason so that you can, um, you know, incorporate a few of those things, you know, to start out the season. And, and so sometimes you can spring a couple of things on them that, you know, maybe they are not necessarily ready for. It's probably not anything that they haven't seen before. They just hadn't worked on it with, with you, you know. Um, and so we deal with that on our end. I'm sure they're dealing with that on their end. And um, that's why, again, I say that the teams that are able to kind of adjust to what they're seeing usually are the teams that have the most success. Using the Raiders game was, you know, was so long ago, but why, why the off front? Was that something you noticed on, on film? Um, no, it was more to just present something new uh, to them and, and, and make them have to you know, get, on, get over on the sideline and start drawing some stuff up and trying to figure some things out. And then you, you kind of go back to what you do. Because your offense is so new, do you anticipate some of that happening Sunday for them? Is that kind of the goal? In terms of? In terms of just like presenting looks that maybe Carolina is not ready for? Or yeah, that would be, I mean, certainly that would be my hope. You know, um, you're always hoping that the other teams over there with the tablets out and drawing on the grease board and doing all that stuff. And if they're doing a lot of that, that's probably good for us. And if they're not, it's probably not. Do you think, Dennis, how much, how much is your defense Evolved. You know, we talk about offenses all the time evolving in the league. You say what you were running seven years ago to now. I mean, I'd say it's I'd say it's evolved significantly from, you know, when I started calling it back in 2015. Um, you know, and, and but those that evolution doesn't take place, you know, over the course of, you know, a year or two years. It really kind of takes place over the course of, you know two, three, four, five years, you know, and, and things kind of change. And you can't become stagnant in anything that you do. You have to always be looking to improve. Um, and so there's always things that we're, we're looking at how maybe we can do, you know, some things better. Um, I would say philosophically, nothing's changed. Um, schematically, a few things. Yeah, look, I mean, we have a certain way that we believe in playing defense. Um, and so that philosophy is hasn't changed. Um, so it's not about what we play, it's about how we play, you know. And so that's, I think, I think that's the key to being successful is having a, a, a belief system and something that you believe in and sticking to that belief and um, holding everybody accountable to, you know, participating in that way and when you do that you usually have some success after all these years of game do you still get excited for an opener yeah man i mean it's, this is why we do what we do is to play these games so yeah absolutely i mean you know coaches players all of us i mean we get we we get excited we get nervous we get um you know we have emotions just like everybody else does you know, and so, um, yeah, we, we all, we all, I think everybody in this building is excited about opening up the season. But it is a little different, isn't it, than when you've been preparing since like July and you finally play. It's different than like in week three from week two. In, in terms of? Just in terms of finally really seeing what you have and the anticipation of this been building over a five, six week period. Um, well, yeah, I mean, look, there's a bunch of teams in this league right now that, you know, they, they, they have an idea. I'd say everyone has an idea of what type of team um, 
they think they have a chance to be, you know, and then that gets defined over the course of time. And so, um, yeah, so, I mean, in, in that regard, yeah, I'm excited to see exactly what we have and, and uh, you know, over the course of time, we'll, we'll, we'll define what kind of team this is really going to be. How, how would you describe your defensive sort of philosophy or system in, in, in the way that people you hope could, could see it from watching film over the last eight years? Like, not giving secrets uh, away about what you want to do, but like... Well, look, oh, I mean... A Dennis Allen defense play. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're going to play hard. We're going to play fast. We're going to play physical. Um, we're, we're not into the business of gimmies, you know, so we're going to try to challenge everything as much as we can. Um, and, um, and we're going to play smart, you know, and, and I think we've done that. And we're not always perfect. There's sometimes we do a better job of it than others. Um, and that's why, you know, the evaluation process of what you are, whether as a player, as a coach, as a unit, you know, it's not a, it's not a one game evaluation. It's what are you over the course of the season? And then what are you over the course of your, you know, career? And um, so, yeah, I think, I think just the fact that we're gonna, we're gonna play tough, we're gonna play physical, we're gonna play with great effort and we're gonna challenge everything. Um, and we're gonna play situationally smart defense. And that's what we believe in. Dennis, uh, when, when you overhaul the offensive staff, the way or any staff, like, like you did this off season, you spend the whole training camp working on it and refining it. Like, what, what's the atmosphere like in the building? Like this week, when you're about to roll it out there and yeah. see what it looks like for the first time. Yeah, I, I liken it to, you know, we're sitting here on Christmas Eve and and we're waiting to see what kind of presents we got under the tree, and um, we'll find out on Sunday. You know. Um, I think I think our offensive staff have, has worked extremely hard. I think they've been very demanding, very detail oriented, and what they've what they've been uh, asking our guys to execute. I think our guys have bought into that. Um, I think our guys have had some really good practices, and in particular over the course of the last three or four weeks. Um, and so I think we're all excited to, you know, see what kind of presents are under the tree. All right, guys, thanks.